Cisco finds critical vulnerabilities in their small business routers. Even more vulnerabilities are found in UEFI firmware shared by multiple vendors. And another huge crypto theft. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for February 8th, 2022. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. A big thank you to Misty, Robert, Bronson, and Mark for joining on patreon.com slash ThreatWire, and a huge shout out to everyone who chose to upgrade their perk level this month. If you join or upgrade to an annual pledge in February, you will get two months of free access to all of your perks which equals about a 16% discount, which is reflected as soon as you sign up. Patreon is the sole reason the show is funded every single week, and I love, love being able to show my appreciation through all the different perks that are available on the Patreon Alliance, so huge thank you. We have a ton of vulnerabilities to cover this week, so let's get into the first news story. On Wednesday of last week, Cisco released a security advisory detailing 15 different vulnerabilities that affect their RV series of routers. These are small business routers that can be used as affordable options for VPN applications for remote workers, for example. They are more advanced than consumer routers in that they can include things like built-in firewalls, advanced encryption options, advanced authentication features, etc. The newly discovered vulnerabilities could allow an attacker to escalate privileges, gain root, and do remote code execution attacks. They could execute arbitrary code and commands, bypass authentication, fetch unsigned software, cause a denial of service, and a lot more. Even though Cisco disclosed these 15 vulnerabilities, some are actually still unpatched, and some could be exploited on their own. Other ones would require a chain of attack. Cisco also mentioned in their advisory that proof of concepts for the exploits are available for some of these vulnerabilities. As of time of recording though, Cisco has not shared whether or not they have seen these used in the wild. The affected routers include the RV340 and the RF345 models in versions 1.0.03.24 and earlier. Patches are available for those, and the RV160 and 260 are vulnerable if still on firmware version 1.0.01.05 and earlier. Now a January patch fixed some of the issues in the firmware ending in 0.07, but not all, since a patch fixing all of these issues has not been released yet, but should come sometime this month. We don't really have a date, but sometime in February. That means that these models are still vulnerable. Cisco provided details for each of the vulnerabilities along with a severity score. For example, the most severe one, which received a critical rating of 10.0, is an SSL VPN remote code execution issue. Unauthenticated remote attackers could execute arbitrary code on the device, and this is caused by insufficient boundary checks while processing HTTP requests. An attacker could send maliciously crafted HTTP requests to a device device acting as an SSL VPN gateway to gain access. Five flaws listed in their advisory scored as critical vulnerabilities. Other problems scored lower on the CVSS base score scale, but they were still major problems. Given that there aren't any workarounds to address this issue right now, if you own one of these devices, you pretty much have to depend on Cisco to actually deliver these patches. UEFI, or I like to say UFI, or the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, was found to have, depending on the vendor, as much as 23 different vulnerabilities considered high severity. These could be exploited either locally or, in some cases, remotely to invalidate important hardware security features, install persistent malicious software or code, create backdoors, send commands to an attacker-controlled server, exfiltrate treat sensitive data, and so much more. Originally found by researchers over at Binarily, the critical vulnerabilities do require some sort of privileged access, with physical access making them very, very easy to exploit. Now, these affect several different manufacturers, including Fujitsu, HP, Lenovo, Dell, Microsoft, Intel, Juniper Networks, and several more. All of the vulnerabilities have CVEs, but I won't list all of those here because there's a lot of them and that would take forever. <laughs> 
Eufy is a part of a computer's firmware, which helps your computer get booted up into your operating system. If you are using an x86 system, for example, Eufy is stored in the flash memory chip for the motherboard. Eufy and its predecessor slash alternative, which is called the BIOS, start up whenever your computer starts up and you can access it to modify low level software and hardware changes, including some security settings, the boot order, and several other options. The vulnerabilities exist within the inside software's inside H2O Eufy firmware, and they could be exploited by an attacker to execute that arbitrary code with SMM, which stands for the System Management Mode Permissions. That's a problem since SMM handles things like hardware configuration, power management, thermals, and several other options as well. Now, the attacker could chain together several of the issues to bypass security features or install malware with persistence. The reason why so many OEMs were affected is because they all use inside based firmware SDKs to develop their own firmware. Inside did release firmware patches, but each and every single OEM needs to implement the patch release schedule themselves, which unfortunately means that many devices will probably never receive patches because they are already EOL, end of life, or they are nearing end of life and they are no longer supported. I wanna say a big shout out to my Hush Puppy Perk level patrons for sharing their fur baby photos and for the support every single week. Let's go ahead and finish out today's episode with my last top story about more crypto being stolen because of course it is, it's 2022. This is like a thing now, it's just, it's a trend. It seems like crypto theft is the new ransomware this year as we are seeing more and more attacks on digital currency and blockchains. This week, Wormhole was hit with an attack that stole $324 million worth of crypto assets from the platform. Wormhole is a popular blockchain bridge which connects all sorts of different blockchains so users can transfer their cryptocurrencies back and forth. In this attack, 120,000 wrapped Ether, or WETH, was stolen, so Wormhole ended up taking their network offline while investigating. Wormhole offered attackers a bug bounty of $10 million for exploit details and to return the WETH that they had minted. Now, more on that in a sec. They also mentioned in their public notice to the attacker that they noticed the attacker was able to exploit the Solana VAA verification and mint tokens. So researchers discovered evidence showing that whoever attacked Wormhole minted 120,000 ETH, they transferred 80,000 ETH from Wormhole, and they tried selling 40,000 ETH on Solana. Now, according to many researchers and outlets, this was caused by Wormhole not properly validating input accounts. So the attacker spoofed signatures, then used the fake signature to generate and trigger the mint. As of Thursday of last week, according to Wormhole, the vulnerability had been patched and all of the funds were returned and restored. Now, some suggested that this was a bailout by a third party, but Wormhole has yet to post a full security incident report, even though they've promised one via their social media. Want to see more tech videos from me? You can check out youtube.com slash Shannon Morse for everything from tech reviews to security tutorials. I've got a networking tutorial coming up soon to show you how I set up a secure network. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe to Hack5 as well. I'm Shannon Morse, and I'll see you on the internet.